Hello everybody and welcome to Brick Vault. Today I get to review for you the UCS, I'm calling it the UCS, uh, 1989 Batwing, set number 76161, 2,363 parts, sells for 200 bucks USD in the States, and uh, comes with three minifigures, two of which are exclusive to just this set. So anyways, before we start with the review, I first do want to say thank you to the LEGO group for sending this set over to us to do a review. I believe this set will be available for everybody starting November 1st. Uh, we will be taking a look at the box as well at the end of the video and the instruction manual. But before we jump into everything, First, let's take a look at these minifigs. These three guys came on a little brick-built stand that looks like the ledge of a building from Gotham. It, I think it's the exact same construction from the 1989 Batmobile set. And we're also going to be doing a comparison uh, with the two UCS sets at the end of this video. But let's look at these figs individually. First up, here is the Joker. He is my favorite one from this set here because he is... I think the most unique and he's also the Joker. Uh, his detailing is actually from a different scene that doesn't have the Batwing. It's the uh, the pen is mightier than the sword scene. Uh, maybe I've clipped a piece of that and put it next to this guy so you can see what I'm talking about. He comes with the quill from that scene. And just in case you wanted to see his full eyebrows, there is the entire print for his head. I'm not going to bother taking off his little uh, tailcoat piece here because there are there is no printing on the sides of the legs. It's uh, It gets cut off right there and that makes sense because you're probably not going to want to display this figure on the side even though they could have if they really wanted to put plaid printing on the sides of the legs not really a big deal great looking fig though and i'm sure he'll remain exclusive to the set this batman here though is actually the same batman that we got from the 1989 Batmobile. Um, I don't know if it's really a bad thing. I've heard some people being like, ah, we should have gotten an exclusive version of him. The reality is he's still gonna be insanely collectible because uh, both this Batwing and the Batmobile from last year are still very big, very expensive sets. So he is definitely, this Michael Keaton Batman is definitely going to be uh, still a pretty rare and pretty difficult figure to get. He has the specially molded cowl piece and there's a little bit of backstory and history to the reason why it's such a over the top and really big and sort of bulky one i like the fact that it's very dramatic this is a figure that's mainly i mean entirely meant to be displayable he comes with his special display stand so uh yeah he's not supposed to be fitting into the vehicle or doing anything like that uh if you want to see the other review where i talk about a little bit of the history of this cowl you can check that out but yeah Still a good fig, not totally disappointed that he isn't completely exclusive. And then the extra side character here, he's a pretty funny one. He's basically just a henchman, but he's a henchman from actually a different scene uh, that also doesn't have anything to do with the 1989 Batwing. It's got a great print on the sides of his arms. This should be a boom box that, sorry, a boom box that he keeps up on his shoulder. That's when the Joker and his henchmen are like destroying a bunch of art in that museum. And uh, yeah, pretty decent print. Nothing too detailed or too out there. The Basically the best part is this arm print on the side. The actual torso print and head is, is whatever. It's nice. It's fine. I think the face is an exclusive print and the boombox is a pretty standard one I think we've seen before. Final thoughts about the figs. This is a better henchman than we normally get. This Batman is still a cool Batman. He didn't really need to be exclusive, though. I'm sure some people will at least lament he doesn't have a different expression. And the Joker's awesome. I like that we got a completely new version of him, but because he comes from a different scene, there was no way we were going to get that really long extended pistol piece. I still think the new version, completely different Joker, is still a better figure to get. Now for the Batwing itself. It is exactly what you would expect from a very big, very detailed Lego expert model. This is rated for uh, ages 18 and up, no surprise there. It is primarily a display piece, but very, very robust. It's big, but it's very, very strong. There's some really interesting techniques used here. Um, a lot of repetitive stuff because you do have to have a really big, strong Technic frame, and then just tons and tons of plates covering it. 
but there are some interesting techniques, especially the way that we get this curved edge along the wing. I know a lot of people probably uh, have thought this is maybe the most unique part of the build. Um, there's some interesting ways that you have some clipped on bars on either end, and then there's also some rubber bands, and you can even see a little bit of, like you can just play around a little bit, but there's some tension that actually pulls this back into place, which is an interesting idea. Um, I know some people are like, ah, I don't want to rely on rubber band pieces, but um, it actually works pretty well, and there isn't a ton of tension on these bands, so I have a feeling they're not going to be breaking and needing to be replaced. I'm sure you could have this on display for like, 10 years or more or forever and you probably would never break those bands. Now, generally speaking, there are some extra details on this model that you may not normally think of or associate with the Batwing, uh, but because I'm sure the designer was like, I'm building in back black, I'm building in black, and, uh, there's just like, there's so much monotony that I think they wanted to create a few, hi create a few highlights for you guys. Um, so. These areas are done in dark bluish gray. These are the little the, the little fins or flaps that help you turn for the bat wings. So they can move up and down, but they're done in dark bluish gray, so they pop a little bit better. Uh, the little guns, the machine guns in the front are dark bluish gray. This actually, I mean, it makes sense for the guns, for the weapons to be done this way, so they can be just a little bit easier uh, to register. And I think it's probably a little bit more fun for the designer to to break up the look of the model. So you have the exposed missiles. These normally would sort of fold in and out of the body of the Batwing, but they've just left them exposed on their own. You could take them off, I suppose, if you wanted them to not grab your eye so much. They're basically the only real color highlight on the model, aside from the fact that we have these little trans yellow lights on the front of the Batwing. So, those are the basic highlights in terms of any major color details. I do like the texturing that we have on the back of the tail here. It's kind of like heat vents almost, not really, but it's just a nice bit of texturing that is accurate to the regular model. And I think they did a great, great job of really making this area of the Batwing nice and smooth on both sides. You have a nice curve coming in on both ends to meet that tip. And that stylistically, I think, works really well. Now moving on to the detail section number two, we've got the cockpit. Let me move this back here a little bit. It's a really, really easy and simple way to get something to fit into the model. It just it just rests there. I just hit the microphone. Uh, it rests right in. It doesn't even wobble. Like pushing side to side, the model is gonna wobble. You're not even seeing any minor taps. So I really like the fit. That fits really well. Uh, these are some great pieces in trans black also. I don't know if they've come out in trans black yet for these larger uh, half cylinder or quarter cylinder shapes. And this is the Millennium Falcon cockpit piece done there. So that's great that we get those pieces. And now we're looking at a wonderful interior. We see a lot of the Batwing interior during that sort of final scene with him uh, fighting against the Joker. Tons and tons and tons of sticker details that make up the different dials and buttons and switches that you have for this model. Let me zoom in a little bit for you so you have an idea of just the amount of all that sticker detailing. Yeah, it really, really pops here. There isn't a ton of sticker stuff. It really is just inside the cockpit that you can see here. And then you can also see that targeting system in the center. There is a little bit of a, sort of a handle there. There's another There's another one there. I don't know. You, when you look at him controlling uh, that little pincer piece in the front of the bat wing, which isn't in the model, by the way, but uh, when you see him controlling it in the movie, there's like 10 different switches he uses to make it fold out and then pinch and then do all that other stuff. Uh, it's pretty interesting uh, build style that we've got here, and there's also a really interesting function here that I'll show you a little bit towards the end. Now, pushing forward ever so slightly, or actually further towards the back, I should say, we've got the bat engine. That's the sticker there. That's the only external out-of-the-cockpit sticker I think that we have 
And on the inside, there are two little wrench pieces that actually have a function. Now, I know I said I'd show you at the end of the video, but I might as well just show you right now because I've mentioned it. You can use this little wrench to just get under the lip of that two by four. Now in the instructions, it says you can use it for picking up this little yellow piece, which I don't actually think is uh, necessary. Sorry, let me get that to fit back on there. But what you do want to do is take out these little side pieces as well, just like this. And now you have exposed these two opening holes that can be used as mounting holes for your display. This Technic bit fits into the rest of the Technic frame of the Batwing. It's super, super strong and it can bear the weight. These two little holes right here can bear the entire weight of this model. That little bit of yellow that I didn't bother to pull out does have a gap that's a little bit wider if you wanted to have it bear some weight as well. Just thought I'd say that. This is a simulation of what it looks like on a wall, hee <laughs> hee. Now that we're magically back from showing you what that would look like once it was hung on a wall, you would replace these pieces onto the model after it's already hung. So you have to make sure that whatever you're using through those holes is totally flush and it wouldn't be intersecting or colliding with these Lego pieces that you're putting back in place. And then that's completely hidden. Now, if they wanted to put the Batwing up on a wall and completely hide its underbelly, that must mean the underside of this model must look terrible. No, it's fine. It's totally fine. Actually, it's uh, pretty good. They have tiny details. Let me see if I can get the light. There you go. Uh, they've got some tiny details here to show off what could be, I don't know, fuel tanks or something. I'm sure they are accurate bits of detailing. And then they've also got, I have it flat here. I actually should have benched them out. I'll, I'll show that on the stand uh, earlier, but you can see that there's just these little bits of fins that come out there and you can kind of see how they would cross with the top fins on the other side. Uh, this is sort of built in, uh, the, the bricks are facing each other and they're all studded into the body. It's a pretty strong connection. And there you can see the little bit of color, but that is, uh, this is where the mounting screws would come through. And this is where this fits into the stand. Other than that though, not really a whole lot to show, but it doesn't look bad. It looks, it looks how it should look. Also something I do want to point out, getting it onto the stand is not great. I would recommend holding it upside down and then attaching it or like sliding it in this way because having it try to slide into the stand just takes a little bit of extra time and finesse and this, this bottom piece will want to slide out from under you. Uh, and this is really the only reasonable way to display the Batwing. If you put it on the side, like canting on its side, this stand is going to be struggling to not flip over. And let me just show you, you can have it cant forward. Ah, I broke that. You can have it canting forward. Uh, so the nose is coming forward. That's the second time I knocked this thing off. Um, but once again, let me just show you, uh, it will be a bit off balance. Can I get that? There we go. It'll be a little bit off balance. So for example, when I spin it, I can feel all the weight on the front toe of the stand. It's not like you can't do it, um, but it definitely feels like it wasn't designed for that. And that is the case. So let's see if I can get that back on. I have, I have popped this off a handful of times as well. Yeah, that looks pretty centered. But anyway, so the stand works and it pretty much just works for having it tilt upwards. And I would say don't even try putting it sideways, flying sideways canted, because it's just not weighted properly for that. Also here is a nice shot of the underbelly of the Batwing. I do like the detailing enough here that if this was on an eye level stand, you gotta see a little bit of the underside and the top side. That's actually not a bad way to show this model off, but uh, that extra display mount option, I think is really going to be the deal maker for a large display set like this. Also, here is a little closer look at the card itself. Uh, pretty basic uh, styling and some 
and some little logistical bits of information, not too different from any of the other display cards. And it works pretty well. I actually like the way this is displayed a lot better than the UCS Batmobile in terms of where that sticker goes. Now moving on to the manual detailing, very simple, classic styling for the 1989 movie. You also have that symbol on the back and it's pretty straightforward. We've got it, uh, basically the specialties are this amazing shot here. Of course they made this shot. It's such an iconic and such a show-offy stunt move. It's like, why would you do that in the middle of a battle? He straight up stalls out in the middle of that scene. It's so strange. Uh, and some nice beauty shots, some nice factoids about the Batwing, sorry, about the Batwing itself. Little blurbs on the designer. And that is basically it. It pretty much gets, there we go. We've got both of the UCS sets together and then it gets straight in to the first steps. Remember to take a look at the back because I, I found these steps here on the wall mounting and I hadn't even realized it had a wall mounting option until I looked into the back of the manual. That's a really nice shot as well. It's got, it's got to have been drilled directly into a brick wall. That would look good on a brick wall. So anyways, love the display option. The manual certainly is a nice bit. Ooh, if I haven't kinked it too much, it is certainly a nice thing to hold on to. And the same can absolutely be said about the box. It's got that same sort of matte black finish. I like that the model itself sort of pops out being a bit shinier there. And you can also see some of the features in the back. Of course, it says wall mount. And I can't believe I didn't know that until I'd already finished the model. Really, really nice though. This is definitely one of those boxes that uh, I'm sure of course uh, keeps the resale value up, but it's also just a cool thing to actually hold on to. I'm not usually big into the boxes, but for something like this, I definitely... Now, if you consider yourself a hardcore, die-hard Batman fan, you're usually a fan of the 1989 franchise because it's one of the most iconic iterations of Batman. And you probably got this one. Uh, you probably got the Batmobile set that came out a year ago, roughly, and then this would be the next one in the lineup. If you hadn't gotten either one, I still think, of course, the Batmobile is just the more iconic physical thing. And the Batwing is the second most iconic physical thing. And really the one thing that this model has over this is a better display option. The wall mounting option is just a more logistically reasonable kind of, you know, adult but playful sort of thing to do that isn't going to take up a massive amount of space because this is a gigantic footprint. This is also a gigantic footprint, just not quite as tall. They're almost the same, like the wing to wing and this to this, they're almost the same length. So in a lot of ways, they'll take up somewhat the same area, the somewhat the same display case or display space. But this one is a little shorter, a little narrower, still gigantic. And uh, this one, this one is probably, I have a feeling most people are going to end up using that wall mount option due to uh, its convenience. And it also will just look pretty darn cool up on a wall. So uh, it's not up to me to say which one is better or worse. I have a feeling they did the Batmobile first because they know it's gonna be that iconic machine that everybody's gonna want. Uh, and then they did this one second because it's the second most iconic machine that everyone's gonna want from Batman. All right, so final thoughts on this set. You get exactly what you think you're going to get for this set. It is, uh, it's a giant Ultimate Collector Series, super detailed, really strong, wonderfully structured model. Um, the build process itself is, is pretty repetitive in the beginning because you're setting up a giant frame. So it's, it's not, I'm gonna say the most exciting build, but it, dirt, it certainly has a, a pretty nice payoff at the end of the day. Are you going to like this more than the, you know, the UCS 1989 Batmobile? That's entirely up to you. The minifigures, I would say, are on par with the other set. It doesn't bother me that you do have the same Batman. I have a feeling he's going to remain probably just as collectible as a minifigure. And uh, the wall mounting display option is pretty excellent. And I think logistically, this does put this slightly above the Batmobile in that way because we're gonna wall mount this here in the studio. I'm sure plenty of other people that get this set are probably going to wall mount it 
as well. So anyways, thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.